Hi Year 6, I'm now reading Chapter 11 of The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas, which is called The Fury, and this takes us back in time a little bit to before they moved to Atwith. So this chapter is Chapter 11, and it's called The Fury. <clears throat> Some months earlier, just after Father had received the new uniform, which meant that everyone had to call him Commandant, and just before Bruno came home to find Maria packing up his things, Father came home one evening in a state of great excitement, which was terribly unlike him, and marched into the living room where Mother, Bruno and Gretel were sitting reading their books. Thursday night, he announced. If we've got any plans for Thursday night, we have to cancel them. Well, you can change your plans if you want to, said Mother, but I've made arrangements to go to the theatre with... The Fury has something he wants to discuss with me, said Father, who was allowed to interrupt Mother, even if no one else was. I just got a phone call this afternoon. The only time he can make it is Thursday evening and he's invited himself to dinner. Mother's eyes opened wide and her mouth made the shape of an O. Bruno stared at her and wondered whether this was what he looked like when he was surprised about something. But you're not serious, said Mother, growing a little pale. He's coming here, to our house. Father nodded. At seven o'clock, he said, so he'd better think of something special for dinner. Oh my, said Mother, her eyes moving back and forth quickly as she started to think of all the things that needed doing. Who's the Fury? asked Bruno. You're pronouncing it wrong, said Father, pronouncing it correctly for him. The Fury, said Bruno again, trying to get it right but failing. No, said Father, the... Oh, never mind. Well, who is he anyway? asked Bruno again. Father stared at him astonished. You know perfectly well who the Fury is, he said. I don't, said Bruno. He runs a country idiot, said Gretel, showing off as sisters tend to do. It was things like this that made her such a hopeless case. Don't you ever read a newspaper? Don't call your brother an idiot, please, said Mother. Can I call him stupid? I'd rather you didn't. Gretel sat down again, disappointed, but stuck her tongue out at Bruno nonetheless. Is he coming alone, asked Mother. Oh, I forgot to ask, said asked Father, but I'm assuming he'll be bringing hair with him. Oh my, said Mother again, standing up and counting in her head the number of things she had to organise before Thursday, which was only two evenings away. The house would have to be cleaned from top to bottom, the windows washed, the dining room table stained and varnished, the food ordered, the maids and butler's uniforms washed and pressed, the crockery and the glasses polished until they sparkled. Somehow, despite the fact that the list seemed to grow longer and longer all the time, Mother managed to get everything finished on time, although she commented over and over again that the evening would be a greater success if some people helped out a little bit more around the house. An hour before the Fury was due to arrive, Gretel and Bruno were brought downstairs, where they received a rare invitation into Father's office. Gretel was wearing a white dress and knee socks, and her hair had been twisted into corkscrew curls. Bruno was wearing a pair of dark brown shorts, a plain white shirt and a dark brown tie. He had a new pair of shoes for the occasion and was very proud of them, even though they were too small for him and were pinching his feet and making it difficult for him to walk. All these preparations and fine clothes seemed a little extravagant all the same because Bruno and Gretel weren't even invited to dinner. They had eaten an hour earlier. Now, children, said Father, sitting behind his desk, and looking from his son to his daughter and back again, as they stood before him. You know there is a very special evening ahead of us, don't you? They nodded. And that it is very important for my career that tonight goes well. They nodded again. Then there are a number of ground rules which need to be set down before we begin. Father was a great believer in ground rules. Whether there was a special or important occasion in the house, more of them were created. Number one, said Father. When the Fury arrives, you will stand in the hall quietly and prepare to greet him. You do not speak until he speaks to you. And then you reply in a clear tone, enunciating each word precisely. Is that understood? Yes, Father, mumbled Bruno. That's exactly the type of thing we don't want, said Father, referring to the mumbling. You open your mouth and speak like an adult. The last thing we need is for either of you to start behaving like children. If the Fury ignores you, then you do not say anything either, but look directly ahead and show him the respect and courtesy that such a great leader deserves. Of course, Father, said Gretel in a very clear voice. And when Mother and I are at dinner with the Fury, you are both to remain in your rooms very quietly. 
There is to be no running around, no sliding down banisters. And here he looked very deliberately at Bruno. And no interrupting us. Is that understood? I don't want either of you causing chaos. Bruno and Gretel nodded. And Father stood up to indicate that this meeting was at an end. Then the grand rules are established, he said. Three quarters of an hour later, the doorbell rang and the house erupted in excitement. Bruno and Gretel took their places standing side by side by the staircase and Mother waited beside them, wringing their hands together nervously. Father gave them all a quick glance and nodded, looking pleased by what he saw. Then he opened the door. Two people stood outside, a rather small man and a taller woman. Father saluted them and ushered them inside, where Maria, her head bowed even lower than usual, took their coats and the introductions were made. They spoke to Mother first, which gave Bruno an opportunity to stare at their guests and decide for himself whether they deserved all the fuss being made of them. The fury was far shorter than Father, and not, Bruno supposed, quite as strong. He had dark hair which was cut quite short, and a tiny moustache, so tiny, in fact, that Bruno wondered why he bothered with it at all, or whether he had simply forgotten peace when he was shaving. The woman standing beside him, however, was quite the most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his life. She had blonde hair and the very and very red lips. And while the fury spoke to Mother, she turned and looked at Bruno and smiled, making him go red with embarrassment. And these are my children, Fury, said Father, as Gretel and Bruno stepped forward. Gretel and Bruno. And which is which, the Fury said, which made everyone laugh except Bruno, who thought it was perfectly obvious which was which and hardly cause for a jerk. The Fury stretched out his hand and shook theirs. And Gretel gave a careful rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed curtsy. Bruno was delighted when it went wrong and she almost fell over. What charming children, said the beautiful blonde woman. And how old are they, might I ask? I'm twelve, but he's only nine, said Gretel, looking at her brother with disdain. And I can speak French too, she added, which was not strictly speaking true, although she'd learned a few phrases in school. Yes, but why would you want to? asked the Fury, and this time no one laughed. Instead they shifted uncomfortably from foot to foot, and Gretel stared at him, unsure whether he wanted an answer or not. The matter was resolved quickly, however, as the Fury, who was the rudest guest Bruno had ever witnessed, turned round and walked directly into the dining room and promptly sat down at the head of the table, in Father's seat, without another word. A little flustered, Mother and father followed him inside and mother gave instructions to Lars that he could start heating up the soup. I can speak French too, said the beautiful blonde woman, leaning down and smiling at the two children. She didn't seem to be as frightened of the fury as mother and father were. French is a beautiful language and you are very clever to be learning it. Eva, shouted the fury from the other room, clicking his fingers as if she was some sort of puppy dog. The woman rolled her eyes and stood up slowly and turned around. I like your shoes, Bruno, but they look a little tight on you, she added with a smile. If they are, you should tell your mother before they cause you to injure yourself. They are a little tight, admitted Bruno. I don't normally wear my hair in curls, said Gretel, jealous of all the attention that her brother was getting. But why not, asked the woman. It's so pretty that way. Eva, roared the fury for a second time, and now she started to walk away from them. It was lovely to meet you, Bert, she said before stepping into the dining room and sitting down on the Fury's left-hand side. Gretel walked towards the stairs, but Bruno stayed rooted to the ground, watching the blonde woman until she caught his eye again and waved at him, just as Father appeared and closed the doors with a jerk of his head, from which Bruno understood that it was time to go to his room, to sit quietly and to not make any noise and certainly not to slide down any banisters. The Fury and Eva stayed for the best part of two hours, and neither Gretel nor Bruno were invited downstairs to say goodbye to them. Bruno watched them leave from his bedroom window and noticed that when they stepped towards their car, which he was impressed to see had a chauffeur, the Fury did not open the door for his companion, but instead climbed in and started reading a newspaper, while she said goodbye once again to Mother and thanked her for their lovely dinner. What a horrible man, thought Bruno. Later that night, Bruno overheard snippets of mother and father's conversation. Certain phrases drifted through the keyhole or under the door of father's office and up the staircase, round the landing and under the door of Bruno's bedroom. 
Their voices were unusually loud and Bruno could only make out a few fragments of them. To leave Berlin and for such a place, Mother was saying. No choice, at least not if we want to continue, said Father. As if it's the most natural thing in the world and it's not, it's just not, said Mother. What would happen is I would be taken away and treated like her, said Father. Expect them to grow up in a place like, said Mother. And that's the end of the matter. I don't want to hear another word on the subject, said Father. That must have been the end of the conversation, because Mother left Father's office then and Bruno fell asleep. A couple of days later, he came home from school to find Maria standing in his bedroom, pulling all his belongings out of the wardrobe and packing them in four large wooden crates, even the things he'd hidden at the back that belonged to him and were nobody else's business. And that is where the story began. Ooh, chapter 12 next and back to talking to Shmuel. Okay, stay safe. Bye.